Hello everyone, welcome to Topic of the Day. In today's edition, we shall be discussing about the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, the IPEF. Now recently, this was seen in news as India agreed to be a part of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity. So let us discuss what is the IPEF. First of all, it is US-led economic grouping of around 12 countries that represent 40% of the global GDP. Now, what does it propose? It proposes to advance resilience or economic growth, competitiveness and fairness in the member countries. And we can say the motive behind this is, first of all, economic leadership of the United States and second, to challenge the Chinese hegemony in the Indo-Pacific region. Now, what all are the member countries? First of all, we have Australia, Brunei, India, Indonesia, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Malaysia, New Zealand, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam and of course the United States of America. Now the IPEF was proposed as an elaborate framework of rules covering four pillars. The first one is fair and resilient trade. Second, supply chain resiliency. Then we have the third one that is clean energy decarbonization. And then we have tax and anti-corruption. Further on, the IPEF aims to develop high-standard worker-centered commitments covering labor rights, the environment and climate, the digital economy, agriculture, transparency and good regulatory practices, competition policy and trade facilitation. Now, the question arises why the IPEF is important for India. Now, IPEF is strategically important for India. Let's see how. First of all, it will enhance India's economic engagement in the region, which was dented after India's withdrawal from the RCEP agreement. RCEP, that is Regional Cooperation Economic Partnership. And secondly, India can consider members as alternative sources for its raw material requirements. This could reduce India's over-dependence on China for these inputs. Further on, the IPEF can also support India's renewed love for free trade agreements. Now, let us discuss the issues and challenges related to it. First of all, it would require huge investments and active participation in the implementation phase. Secondly, more unilateral and not consensus-based as it is driven primarily by the United States of America. Also, it comes with binding trade rules but no guarantee on the market access. So, this becomes one of the major problems. Further on, the main concern of India is on the issue of data localization on which there is no positive engagement with the United States over the last two or three years. So, given the scenario, what can be the possible way forward? First of all, the unilateral character of the arrangement should be changed, therefore giving way to more plural and multilateral arrangement. Also, there is a need for an organization or secretariat to drive and oversee the arrangement, which houses representatives from all the member states. And if it is absent, the IPEF arrangement would lose its relevance. Now, let us take up a practice question on this topic. Which of the following countries are members of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, the IPEF? Australia, India, United States of America, China and Indonesia. You have to select the correct answers using the codes given below and you can write your answers in the comments section. So the correct answer is D, that is China is not the member of Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, IPEF, but Australia, India, US and Indonesia are part of it. Therefore, the correct answer is D only. Well, with this, we call it a wrap of today's edition of Topic of the Day. You can also learn these topics in depth in the Daily Current Affairs section on our website. I'll see you with a new topic tomorrow. Till then, take care and do stay tuned.